Africa is a continent full of legends, men and women who have greatly impacted the course of history, kings and queens, scientists, historians, and many more who have placed Africa as a cradle of humanity. Welcome to the Legends of Africa series, where we take a look into the rich and complex world of our past through the lives of great men and women who we consider today our legends. Before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. In today's video, we'll be looking at the royal queen of Makeda, better yet known as the Queen of Sheba, and who holds the title of Mother of Ethiopian Nations. We first get introduced to her in the Bible and the Quran as a glamorous and mysterious figure. The Queen of Sheba traveled to Jerusalem to visit King Solomon. She had heard of his immeasurable wisdom and vast kingdom that she traveled to see for herself and test his knowledge. It is also mentioned that she went with gold and spices, spices so rich and rare that never again came such an abundance of spices to King Solomon's kingdom. Ethiopians also have their version of the Queen of Sheba's life history. When King Solomon was constructing his temple, he sought out merchants from all over the world to buy materials for the building. One of the merchants was a man named Tamrin from Ethiopia. When Tamrin returned to Ethiopia, he told the queen of the great wisdom and kindness of King Solomon, and she decided to see it for herself. Once she arrived, she was treated very well, receiving gifts every day and having insightful conversations that she decided to convert to Judaism. Since it was also known that King Solomon was the wisest man, she tested his knowledge with questions and riddles to which he answered all to her satisfaction. King Solomon took a liking to her and threw a banquet for her on the last night. Later on, she spent the night with him. Solomon also gave her a promise ring on the day of her return as she traveled back home. When she traveled back home, she gave birth to a son named Bin Al-Hakim, which translates to the son of a wise man, later named Menelik. Why do I mention the promise ring? Well, that piece of information will come in handy soon. Years go by and Menelik grows up in Ethiopia, but one day at the age of 22, he decides to return to visit his father. Remember the promise ring King Solomon gave his mother? He kept it and carried it for proof of relation. Menelik and his father had a great bond and were very fond of each other, so much so that King David wanted to make him heir over his kingdom, but to which Menelik declined as he had to return home. King Solomon gathered his nobles and ordered their firstborns to travel back to Ethiopia with Menelik. Menelik was also anointed as king by the high priest and he took the name David. Now it is unclear on how the Ark of the Covenant got to return with him to Ethiopia. Many Ethiopians still believe today that the Ark of the Covenant resides within the chapel of the tablet next to the church of Mariam Sion in Aksum, Ethiopia. Though not much is told about her life before the encounter with King Solomon, we know that she was a great queen who possessed great riches. Ethiopian records assert that the Queen of Sheba ruled the Aksumite Empire, situated in northern Ethiopia. It is recorded that she gifted King Solomon with 112 golden talents, which is equivalent to $3 million in present-day time. Also, as mentioned earlier on, one of her gifts was rare spices, which suggests her kingdom was involved in the spice trade. She commanded a great army and was believed to be one of the greatest queens to rule Ethiopia, and through her and her son Menelik brought the Ark of the Covenant to Ethiopia. The Queen of Sheba is also mentioned in the New Testament by another title, the Queen of the South. In the New Testament, Jesus alludes to her, reaffirming her historical personage. Ethiopians see their country as God's chosen nation the final resting home that God chose for the Ark of the Covenant, and Sheba and her son Menelik were the means by which it came there. Thus, Sheba is considered as the mother of the Ethiopian nation. What are your thoughts about today's video? Do you believe that the Queen of Sheba was the greatest queen to have ever lived? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit the notification bell. If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to watch our other videos which celebrate our Mama Africa. We have the Mysteries of Africa series and the Amazing People of Africa series. 
It's been me, Linda from Tuna Travel. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel. Until the next video, stay safe and I'll see you then. And remember, Africa is watching.